is notes 3.3 .3, and I'd like to point out the title changes in state so what does a change in state means well it means going from a solid to a liquid to a gas that's a change in state where no new uh, chemicals are being made no new substances no new matter is being made in other words matters it's this is water here solid liquid water gaseous water it's water throughout the entire process okay I'm gonna go ahead and add some supplemental notes to this you can try to squeeze them in perhaps down here if you'd like or I'd recommend maybe using a different sheet of paper okay and this is the uh, we'll call this the heating curve heating curve of water heating curve of water so this is a phase change phase changes change in state oops phase change okay, phase change and if I were to take some water and start to heat it up and plot the temperature over here on the y-axis okay starting with zero or below zero down here and then um, plot it over a certain amount of time what I would see is this let's just say I started at right around 25 or room temperature degrees Celsius as I heat the water up as I heat the water up I get a um, I get a nice line there and this would be at let's say zero degrees well, let's see yeah we'll take it down to zero okay right here at zero zero degrees and at a hundred degrees at a hundred degrees what happens is it starts to boil now some of you guys knew that right off the bat from uh, in the lab remember we stuck that slab in boiling water and the reason we did that is because we knew it was going to be right around 100 degrees so that way we could start our calculations at 100 degrees for the initial temperature of the slab well <clears throat> as we heat this up heat it up heat it up what happens at 100 it's interesting the you could put the thermometer in there and you notice the temperature is not changing at that point it would remain unchanging and how long does it remain unchanging well it remains unchanging until all of this would turn into steam and then you could superheat steam you could heat the steam back up so in this phase right here we're adding energy we're adding energy as it heats up and you could follow this thing back the other way too I could take boiling water so this would be the boiling water and I could follow the path of energy back and as it cools we as it cools it loses energy right as it cools it loses energy okay so at this point right here this is boiling this is boiling and the temperature does not change the temperature doesn't change but notice we still have to add some energy into this in order to boil off all the water and then turn it into uh, turn it into gas turn it into steam now we in our experiment in the lab we weren't capturing the steam but you could you could capture the steam in a vessel and you could continue to heat that steam up and the steam would get hotter and hotter in our lab all we did was just boil the water off and it went into the room so if we were somehow able to capture that steam in a vessel and measure it then we would see that the temperature of the steam is actually much hotter than the temperature of the boiling water okay so what you need to remember is this point right here where this curve goes flat that's boiling water uh, that's where the water is boiling and the temperature is not changing it's holding steady at 100 degrees so how much energy is required to boil off all of this water well you can do a simple calculation using something called the heat of vaporization okay and that's called delta H vaporization vaporization all right delta H of vaporization and I'm going to give you what that value is later on but right now I just want you to get this concept down that as you increase energy you're going to get uh, water that eventually starts to boil once it hits that boiling point or the point of vaporization then uh, the temperature holds steady okay and you can continue to add energy and you'll get steam and that can uh, if you continue to heat the steam the temperature will rise and conversely if you follow this down then what you get not vaporization but the same point right here is the also called the point of condensation okay so the delta H of condensation 
here's the tricky part. We still call it vaporization, but we're going to assign one of these a positive and a negative value. Okay, so vaporization uh, equals delta is condensation, and vaporization well is vaporization. Okay, so one of them's a negative and one of them's a positive. Can you figure out which one it is? Well, if we're adding energy, then that's going to be a positive, right? That's positive, and this one's going to be negative. Okay, but we're going to get to that in just a minute. Let's go ahead now and shift gears and look at it uh, graphically, like such. So here we have solid, liquid, and gas. And again, if we add energy, if we add energy to this thing, uh, it's an endothermic process, right? Because we're adding energy. This, is, this solid is going to absorb energy. It's going to weaken the bonds and turn it into a liquid. And if we keep adding more energy, the bonds between these little particles are going to weaken further. Okay, so this is, as we add energy here, as the arrow goes up, we call this endothermic. Q is going to be greater than zero. Q is greater than zero. And let me just go back and say, this is where things get a little bit confusing. Delta H, we use delta H for heat when we, saw, when we solve these problems here, as you're about to see, these uh, boiling and vaporization problems. But just remember, delta H and Q can be used interchangeably. Okay, they can be used interchangeably in chemistry. So, uh, Again, we're adding energy to this process to turn it from a solid to a liquid to a gas, so that's endothermic. And what happens is the bonds between particles weaken. Bonds between particles weaken. And we should really say the attraction. Let's not say bonds, let's say attraction. Attraction between molecules weaken, yeah. Okay, and so if we're going from a, so let's go ahead and identify what each of these is. If we're going from a solid to a gas, we call that sublimation. That's solid to gas. Gas to a solid is called deposition. Solid to a liquid is called melting. Liquid to solid is called freezing. Liquid to a gas is called vaporization. Mm, it's going to be kind of hard to write this in there. I'll write it over here. Uh, well, let's write it here. Vaporization. And gas to liquid is called condensation. So those are phase changes, okay, along with their names. So now let's look at this. If we're losing energy, if we're losing energy uh, going from a gas with a lot of energy in it to a liquid, which has less energy, right, because these particles are closer together to a solid, particles are really close. In other words, they form a crystal eventually here. Uh, we're losing energy. So we're going from a high energy state to a lower energy state to the lowest energy state. So if we're losing energy, that's called exothermic that process is exothermic okay so exothermic and in this case Q is going to be less than zero the heat is going to be less than zero okay Q is going to be less than zero and what happens to these attractions well you can just look at it and see visually okay they're far apart here they're closer together here and they're the closest together there so attractions become stronger particle attractions they strengthen I'm gonna go ahead and stop that video here uh, that'll be the end of part one